so uh, how could you uh, include uh, flexibility and robustness uh, in, into system design? Uh, and here's one notional, uh, very notional uh, uh, block diagram uh, that essentially uh, treats uh, the flexibility of a system as uh, as options that the operator that the operator has. And the word options is very carefully selected uh, because the word option uh, has a meaning uh, in addition to uh, to in common in common parlance has a meaning in the financial world. Uh, options are uh, derivative securities uh, to purchase an underlying uh, an underlying asset. Uh, so you, you have the right but not the obligation uh, to purchase that asset. There's an analog to options. In, there are many analogs to options, I should say, in the, in the day-to-day world. They're called real options. They're your option to do something or not do something. Uh, and those options, just like financial options, have value. And it is readily quantifiable pecuniary value. Uh, in the financial world, the mechanism for valuing options is called the Black-Scholes, the famed Black-Scholes equation. Um, and an analog of the Black-Scholes equation can be applied to real options, options that a system operator or system stakeholder or system architect has and can exercise throughout the life cycle of that system in response to the various uncertainties that arise. Those options have quantifiable monetary value. Uh, and uh, the robustness side of, of, uh, of the story, uh, so that was the flexibility side of the story. The robustness side of the story uh, also has a very a ready uh, real-world analog, uh, and that is, uh, that is the theory of risk pricing. Essentially, what robustness is, is uh, as I mentioned, it's the intrinsic response of a system to various uncertainties. Uh, and if a system responds in a less volatile manner, for instance, by virtue of being a distributed system, so if you have uh, an anti-satellite attack or something like that, uh, it takes out a portion of your system but not the entire system, uh, the volatility of the, resp- the response of either the performance or the cost or, or some other metric of the system right, is lower. Uh, and that, uh, and the, the, the value of having a lower volatility of, of the intrinsic system response to uncertainty is, uh, is exactly the same as uh, insuring the system, buying insurance for the system. And how do insurers decide how much should you pay in, in, your, in terms of your insurance premiums? Well, through actuarial pricing models. Uh, and those actuarial pricing models are one of the tools of, of modern finance uh, that, uh, that we can apply to real world, uh, to, uh, to, to aerospace systems, uh, and capture the value, the value increment that a robust system has over a system that is less robust. And we can properly account for that value. Um, and so but then by adding, uh, adding all of these increments of value, as well as the underlying value of the system, you can compute a, uh, essentially a net value. And by the way, and I'll turn to this a little bit later, later in the talk, you can also take the variance of net value, and that's risk. Um, and the importance of that will become apparent, uh, apparent shortly. So a little bit more detail. Uh, uh, so uh, both flexibility and robustness, as I mentioned, uh, sort of by analog to the, to the financial world, they're derivative attributes. So a system that is flexible and robust but does nothing is worthless. So the flexibility and robustness of a system that doesn't have any underlying mission value is zero, continues to be zero, no matter how flexible it is. Um, so in order to value flexibility and robustness, you need to be able to value your quote unquote underlying asset. And the underlying asset in this case is the value of the mission, is what is it that my system does in the first place. Um, and, uh, and so this is one of the problems that Hitch struggled with in, uh, back in the 60s, which is how do you quantify value in dollar terms or, or in any sort of quantitative terms uh, when there are these different attributes of, of the system, different performance attributes, uh, field of view, bandwidth, uh, area of coverage, uh, availability, uh, or in the, case of, in the case of aircraft, it might be range, payload. How do you trade those off? How do you come up with a single uniform metric that's commensurable to cost uh, that reflects all of those? And there's a variety of techniques. Again, this is uh, uh, relatively modern stuff, uh, mostly from, uh, from microeconomics. Uh, one such technique uh, is multi-attribute utility analysis, uh, which involves asking stakeholders uh, uh, essentially uh, to, to make decisions in, a lot, in something called a lottery. Uh, would you prefer so much of attribute A with this probability versus so much of attribute B with this probability? And uh, this is an automated interview process uh, that's done with a piece of software that constructs these hypothetical scenarios and elicits a stakeholder's preference uh, for the various attributes and combines them into a single utility metric that can then be mapped uh, through a, 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 a calib- an admittedly complicated calibration procedure uh, into dollar terms. Uh, so it, it allows you to come up with, uh, with essentially a utility surface and construct a single utility metric that reflects the stakeholder's in interest in the various attributes, in the various performance attributes of the system. Um, and so then, and then you can translate that utility into, into dollar terms. 
Uh, and so that's one approach. There are others. Uh, AHP, uh, analytical hierarchy processes, is, is, a, is another option. Uh, contingent valuation is the third one. Uh, actually, oh, I guess uh, synthetic markets. Uh, and by the way, if anybody has an interest in any of those specifically, we can talk about that uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, so then, uh, I, I already touched on this, but this is just a depiction of the analog between financial options and real options and, and valuing flexibility. And, and options have different levers, like the volatility of the underlying asset, which translates to uh, uh, to the volatility of both the cost and the performance of, of, of your system, uh, and that changes the value of the options. So a system that is prone to wide, fluctuate, uh, wide fluctuations in performance for, for whatever reason, or that operates in a particularly hostile environment, the option to maybe repair or upgrade that system uh, would be very, very valuable because of the underlying volatility. Um, so, uh, so that's flexibility. And then on the robustness side, uh, again, I, I mentioned uh, the, the risk premium uh, analog, or the actuarial pricing method uh, analog, but there are more sophisticated techniques. Uh, on the upper left is a very cool picture of a stochastic petri net, uh, which is a much more sophisticated technique for uh, computing the robustness attributes of, of, of a particular system. Um, so how do you put all this together? So, or how do you deploy this in the real world? You have uh, uh, you now have the cost, and you now have the value of the system, and presumably they're, they're incommensurable metrics. Uh, and uh, what you can do, and what you have depicted here, is, is a notional, this is a completely notional output of a tool. And uh, the maximum value minimum, minimum cost set of solutions are the Pareto form, the Pareto frontier. So I, I talked a little bit about the, uh, the importance of being able to quantify risk. Let me just summarize briefly where we stand with respect to risk management. In today in, in the systems engineering process, right? We, uh, we can quantify cost risk by taking the variance of, of the cost of the system. Uh, but when it comes to things like technology risk or performance risk, uh, we use what's called the stoplight approach, right? Which is we color code the risk uh, based on uh, some underlying combination of probability of occurrence and magnitude, but these are qualitative judgments. But now that we can quantify the performance of the system uh, as a single attribute called value, we can now take the variance of value just as we take the variance of cost and quantify performance risk of the system. So between performance and cost, that's, that is the risk of the, so that is the com a complete risk characterization of the system. Uh, so on this, uh, on this uh, plot of, of cost versus value, this trade space plot, you can draw ovals uh, around particular designs uh, that represent uh, the uncertainty, uh, one sigma, two sigma, three sigma uncertainty uh, variance in, in the cost direction and in the value direction. And you can start trading, doing quantitative trades of uh, the value of the system or the cost of the system and what is the riskiness of the system. And is deploying a particular risk mitigation strategy now value just cost and value justified for me? It might not be. Today the approach is we have a risk, we burn it down. Whatever it takes, we have to burn down the risk until it gets to a certain TRL level. Right? But maybe you want to incur a particular risk because mitigating the risk is not cost and value justified. If all you're doing today is doing it on a cost axis, well, you don't know what's going on on the performance axis because it's all qualitative. Uh, but now that, now that you can fully characterize the impact of the risk, you can make genuine trade-offs and, and decide to keep some risks or create an option, reserve an option uh, to hedge against, to use another, another financial analog, to hedge against that risk instead of just mindlessly burning money to burn it down. So even if you have this wonderful tool that allows you to explore the trade space, and analyze the cost and value of these various designs, and risk, cost, value, and risk of these various designs, um, how you fit that in uh, to the systems engineering process is, is non-trivial. And the reason that it's non-trivial is because uh, just like cost is not really a metric that the designer, that the, the component level or the subsystem level designer uses, they use proxy metrics. They use size, weight, and power. Um, uh, so just like cost is not the ultimate metric that they use, if you now put value in that system analysis and control box as the metric, or net value, uh, as the metric, it's not clear what the designer, when he's designing widget B that gets included into this big system, it's not clear what the designer should be maximizing or minimizing. What is he designing to value? Well, I mean, the widget itself doesn't have any value. The system delivers value. Um, so what is the designer to do? Um, and uh, are there any proxy metrics for value? Um, and uh, this is an ongoing and active area of research.